count of three when children open the shoe boxes. They're so excited. I mean, it's just been incredible. Kids are so excited. Giving them a gift, do it in Jesus' name, and that's what this is all about. Jesus loves you. It's a gospel opportunity. It's the chance for the children to change the entire life. The word of God is spreading. The gospel is advancing. It is impacting children. It is impacting families. It is impacting the world greatly. Thank you for praying. Thank you for giving. God will bless, and God will use your gift to touch the life of a child and to be able to do it in Jesus' name. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of it. God bless each and every one of you. Before we get, we got just a few announcements, and Tammy has got some announcements. I'll be in. We'll have people stand out there with flashlights to guide them down to the pumpkin patch so they can let their children off. They'll enter on one side and they'll exit on the other side and they'll go in, we will have no contact. They'll just come in and pick a pumpkin up that will be full of goodies. We have, um, Brooke has ordered some um, pencils and some little Maple Grove Baptist Church bracelets. Mike Opal has a pamphlet. Stephanie's working on some stuff. Sandy Osborne's getting, um, Chick-fil-A to go in there. Uh, Pam has coloring books. So we have a lot of stuff to go in here. But guess what we don't have? Money. Candy. Oh. <laughs> so we need candy desperately to fill these little buckets up. Uh, we're hoping it's going to be very successful this year. We can't come upstairs and have a big story like we had before. But hopefully we can put some information and stuff in there for them that will give them a story. So we're putting Bibles in too. Yes, right? the Gideons are yeah. providing a Bible for every bucket. So we're just really excited, uh, making the best of a unusual situation. But we still want the little children to have a good time, uh, know that church is fun and Jesus loves them. So that's what hopefully is gonna be in our buckets. Pam, do you or Sandy or any, Brooke have anything to say? Now, I think they're going to make pictures, too, so they'll have an area set up so the kids can get their pictures made yeah. in their costumes, which will be kind of fun and different, too. So that'll be, yeah. So if anybody has anything they'd like to donate or pick up fun stuff to put in there, or y'all may have terrific <coughs> ideas we've not thought of, please help us out. I have, uh, I have pictures, like blank pictures, that we could print them on if we need that. I could donate that if somebody else has a color printer or something. Mm -hmm. So that, that's our plan. It, it will be the Wednesday night before Halloween on Saturday, which is the 28th. It will go from 6.30 to 8. Uh, we'll need a lot of help with traffic control. We're planning on putting some type of little barrier, not like a fence or anything, but something across the back to separate the driveway from the field. So we can, we'll need some people there with flashlights to kind of make sure the kids don't come back up into the parking area. Okay. It's got to be safe. It has to be safe, yeah. And so this way nobody has any personal contact. We can do the very best we can to have a good time and feel safe about it. So, But we do need candy. Please start bringing candy. When do we want to fill these buckets? Should we do it on a Sunday night before? I'm afraid if we went to Wednesday night because so many of us work, it will be great difficulty to get here in time to get the whole field set up. Talk about Sunday night before. Yeah, so I'm th saying if we come, we could come Wednesday night and set the field up early. But I think the bucket pumpkins need to be filled before then. 
So next Sunday night, we want to try to everybody bring candy and all kinds of good stuff, anything you can think of. We do have a few odd-colored pumpkins, and we thought we would put those for tree nut people who are allergic, have food allergies, that we would put those in the blue pumpkins. And that way they'll know which ones are safe for them. Does everybody sound good? That sound good with everybody? Sounds good. Sounds okay. good. Okay. <laughs> okay, Sunday night, start bringing candy because candy's expensive, so you better start buying it now. <laughs> <laughs> and I know the Walmarts, uh, the ones I've been in and looked around in, they have candy, but they don't have a lot of candy. So, uh, so be careful with, be careful. We're going to be making candy. Yeah, you'll be making candy, so. And if you go online, there's a 50% off coupon for the Halloween candy. So Kroger and uh, Marable. 50% oh. off coupon? Mm -hmm. Online. Oh, wow. wow. So 50% off on the Kroger and Marable, the online program. Money to and them pick up a bunch of candy for us. Did you do that? Okay, Sandy and... Don't forget the uh, blanket drive uh, that's uh, we continue through this month for the Baptist Center. Um, if you've got a blanket that you can bring in, uh, there's a box out here in the foyer you can leave it in. Again, if uh, you can't get out and you want to donate money, I'm sure some of these ladies here would like to take your money and spend it, and they'll uh, they'll get all the blankets they can. So don't forget that coming up as well. Is there any other announcements that I'm missing? Are out front to be taken. Okay. November the 15th. Okay, is there, is there a sign up sheet out there? No. no. You just get your box. Okay, so the shoe box is. It's a best $9. $9. It's still, still $9. That's for the booklets that they put in there in their own language. That's not just all for postage, that's for training the people to teach them and for their literature and everything but they still suggest nine dollars okay so the shoe boxes are out front to take and as you've seen in the video you know these go to kids around the world uh, that's not just this area that does that i believe that's a nationwide thing that does that uh, so if you if you take a box bring it back by november 15th and um, a nine dollar donation per box um, it, Let's just say it's required, okay? Uh, that's to take care of the shipping and stuff. So uh, if you take a box, please uh, bring it back. Uh, I believe there's, we've got a list of some things that you can put in there, ideas maybe. Okay, okay. And for, for the, uh, our church members that are watching from home, if you, wanna, uh, if you want a box, you know, get a hold of somebody. We'll we'll get some boxes to you that way, and can pick them back up. So, hmm. Okay, Sandy, Sandy. So get a hold of somebody, and uh, we'll get those boxes to you if you know somebody that's. We online where you can pay twenty five dollars, and they pack a shoe box. You don't, and you can track it. But now I'm not into that, so I don't know about that information. Okay. Well, well, what we'll do is. We'll try to do this week is we'll try to find the uh, the web address I for that. I thought that Mary had talked to Mike Ogle about that, but I'm not sure. I'll find out tonight. Okay. Mike, Mike's preaching uh, this morning, so do remember Mike in your prayers as he preaches. Uh, Jimmy's still filling in on Sunday mornings, um, so you need to continue to remember Brother Jimmy in your prayers. Any other announcements? Excited on Wednesday for the cleanup outside. Wendy's having her surgery Wednesday, so I can't be here. Okay. If y'all want to do it, you can, but we probably need to put it off. Okay. Whatever you. Okay, we'll try to figure something out today or tonight on that. So. Any other announcements? Any prayer requests or praises? 
pray for Paisley Lane, the little girl that comes through that's two years old on our prayer chain yesterday that is in the ICU at Children's. Uh, she has the norovirus, or some kind of virus and pneumonia right now. They're checking for the COVID, but she may have to be put on the ventilator. She is getting worse today. Paisley Lane, is that her name? Paisley Lane. So I remember Paisley Lane in your prayers. Remember the parents and the doctors that care for this little one? Anyone else? Remember Mac and Mary, they're traveling this week. Yes, remember Mac and Mary, they're traveling. Anyone else? My wife Patty, she's having surgery. She's having a colon section done Thursday. So remember them. And remember Wendy, she's having surgery Wednesday. Wednesday. We don't know what time yet. They're going to call us and tell us what time to be there. Remember when you in your prayers as well. Continue to remember Gerald in his in uh, in your prayers as well. You know, I'll be honest with you, Lord's Lord really blessed that man. Yeah. Um, you know, I told you on Wednesday, a uh, doctor giving you a twenty percent chance of making it through a surgery is not too good of odds. But I'm glad that we're serving the Lord that can. Okay. Uh, that is an answer to prayer. So you continue to remember Gerald and his recovery. Anyone else with a prayer request? I have a pray slash prayer request for the same person, but remember my cousin uh, Mike Tipton. He had um, he lives in Missouri, but he has a cabin here in the mountains. Then he had fallen, and just by some strange reason, they decided to get him all checked out. Well, they found a, a, a little a tumor along the brain area, and it was a very serious surgery. He's already had that one. Meanwhile, when he went to uh, back back home to Missouri, uh, his regular doctor wanted to have you know another scan, you know, and work up and, and to look himself. And they discovered uh, some other tumors that are um, around the parotid. Does that seem like something? The parotid area, I mean, something around the thyroid. The thyroid area, anyway. But there's at least two more. And so once he heals from this surgery, and he's doing well so far, he will be having more surgeries. So continue to remember him for me, please. Continue to remember Mike in the prayers. Papers born. Steve Buller died. Yes, Steve died. He's passed away. Yeah, remember, remember Steve Bullard's family in your prayers. Um, they're they're going to have grave graveside. I was his pastor for a long time, and they're having graveside for him Tuesday or Tuesday afternoon. So do remember that family in your prayers. Anyone else? We want to thank the Lord for watching over us this week. We had a really really difficult week, and um, you know I come in and I think you know how bad I felt this week and how I didn't have energy to do anything. And, you know, Kyle's been through a lot this week. And then I hear people so sick or family members that have lost loved ones. And what I'm going through is just itty bitty compared to what other people are going through right now. So um, I just thank the Lord for, for watching over us this week. Amen. Anyone else? Have I spoken? Remember this. Lynn, um, remember my neighbor? He's across the street. He, he lost his life back in July. And we talk to him just about every day. Um, he's he's still grieving pretty hard for himself. Mm -hmm. He goes to church, and so he, he's a man of faith, but he's a uh, new married for 50 something years, and then everything's gone. I can't, I can't imagine how hard it's been for him. And um, also, I talked to my sister. Her husband got diagnosed with cancer. It's, it's treatable. Um, it's possibly even curable. So that's wonderful. But just remember them. Yes. Anyone else? Praise. Right. John gets to go back to work tomorrow. So Amen. that's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> he has some mixed feelings about it. <laughs> Something to be thankful but for. But it is. Yes. Yes. Amen. Right. Yes. right. And pray for his protection because... You know, yeah. He needs to take it easy, not go in full force. But. My cousin's been released in South Carolina to rehab, uh, but he's got uh, cancer. It's, uh, it's pretty much all over. So please continue to remember him. He's 59, I think. Yeah. Remember this. Continue to remember Mary. Still need your prayers because they're recovering from a lot of uh, medical problems. Yes. Just remember this. Did you remember Mary? She's uh, uh, she's uh, still 
trying to work through the all the uh, stuff she's got to go through for a heart transplant and uh, so you continue to remember her she goes through the next step uh, in her health so you pray for that anyone else two of my students they both lost their dads here recently then I have another student that's but a lot, a lot going on in her life right now, and she's missed our prayers greatly. Remember these. Anyone else? Pray for our nation. Yes, pray for a member of our nation, a member of our country. Anyone else? Sandy, will you lead us in prayer, please? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you this morning and just thank you, Lord, for being with us through this week, Lord, and guiding us. And, uh, thank you, Lord, for the nice cooler weather and the opportunity to slow down, Lord, and, and to spend more time with you and your word, God. Lord, I just uh, ask that you forgive me where I failed you. Help me, Lord, to be a better witness for you. Help me, Lord, to be brave and strong. Lord, let me be a light to somebody else who may need to see your actions, Lord, through me. Lord, I lift up these requests that we have, Lord. I just pray that you would just answer one according to your will, Lord. We have faith and trust in you, Lord, that you know the best for each one, Lord. And just give us the ability to accept things that are, Lord, and to praise you even in the valleys and the mountaintops, Lord. Please be with Brother Allen as he brings us our message this morning. Prepare our hearts and our minds and open us up, Lord, to receive your spirit. Speak to us, Lord. All these things I ask in your sweet, precious name. Amen. Have your Bibles with you uh, this morning and you want to turn along with us. We'll be in John chapter number seven this morning uh, john chapter seven and we will read uh, uh, we'll read a few verses uh beginning in verse um verse number 32 and then we will skip down and uh, start reading here uh, in verse number 40 as well so john chapter number seven uh, john chapter number seven so stand with us for just a moment and we'll read uh, the Word of God, and then we'll have prayer, and then we'll share with you um, what the Lord's laid on our heart. Starting in verse 32, um, the Bible, it says, The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Let's skip down to verse 40. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, uh, shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the tomb of uh, town of Bethlehem where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him. And some of them would have, would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, why have, you, uh, not, uh, why have you not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are you also deceived? How, uh, have any of the rulers... Uh, uh, excuse me. Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. Nicodemus saith unto them, He that came by Jesus by night, being one of them, doth our law judge any man before it hear him, and know what he doeth. And they answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of the Galilee ariseth no prophet. Let me say this, Jesus wasn't a prophet, he was the son of God, amen? And every man went out unto his own house. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer, Lord, this morning, thanking you, Lord, for this time. Thanking you, Lord, for this wonderful day, God, that you've given 
uh, for this day so that we could come and worship and we could come and praise you, Lord, here today. Lord, as we pray, we just pray, God, that these, this message and these words, God, is recorded in, recorded in your word. Lord, it would change our hearts today. It would help us, God, to grow closer to you. It would help us, Lord, to uh, just to serve you in, 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 in a better and more capacity. Lord, we just pray today that uh, most important prayer, God, if there's anyone that's lost, uh, we pray that uh, through uh, the words and through uh, you speaking to their heart and, and revealing to them the need of salvation, that, God, that they would uh, take, uh, take you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, as we pray today, I know that, uh, Lord, as, uh, it's evident in our prayer request that, God, there's needs in many uh, people's lives, not just in this church, not just in this community, but worldwide, God, there, there is a people that need you. They need, they need Jesus in their life. Lord, I just pray today that, uh, Lord, as we, uh, as we leave here in just a, a moment or two, that even every one of us, God, from uh, it doesn't matter the age, it doesn't matter the capacity that we are in, it doesn't matter who we are, that, God, that we can, uh, we can just grow uh, closer to you and, and that, God, that we can just leave here different than the way we've come in. God, sometimes we come in with many burdens on our heart. God, sometimes we come in with trials, God, that we're facing in life. Lord, sometimes we come in uh, because of fear or certain things going on around us. Sometimes people come in, God, that are lost and they need, they're looking for hope. They're looking for peace. They're looking for a change in their life. God, may this be that day that every one of us can experience uh, uh, just, just a touch of you here today. Lord, as we give you thanks, we want to thank you for dying on a cross for our sins. God, we want to thank you for the peace that you've given into our hearts and into our homes. We want to thank you, Lord, for the joy that you've given us in our daily lives. God, we want to thank you uh, for the hope that we have of tomorrow. God, we want to thank you for the sting of death that you've taken away from all of those that's trusted and believed in you. Lord, we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we look in the scripture here uh, this morning, this is... This is a scripture we've preached from before, uh, but in my studies, I've, I've seen something that I, I've missed, and uh, God, I like it when God speaks to my heart, okay? I like to feel the presence of the Lord, not just in church. Um, I like feeling Him when I'm in my car and driving down the road. I like, I like hearing from the Lord even at work sometimes, uh, you know, because he's, he's real to me. He's my Savior. And he's just as much a part of my life as anything that I know. Uh, so when I was reading this scripture and studying, I came to the point, of the, the place in the scripture here, of where uh, the, you know, the Pharisees uh, sent um, officers to go and arrest Jesus. And they get to that point in verse 46, and they're returning unto the, unto the Pharisees. And the, and the officers answered and said, Never man spake like this man. And you know what? That is so true today. Uh, you know, Jesus, he, to me, he's the greatest speaker that ever was and ever will be. Uh, I can remember uh, back uh, in high school, and many of you, you can remember your time in high school. Uh, you can remember your times in middle school or even grade school. Uh, you, had, you had teachers, and I'm not saying all teachers are bad. I'm not saying all teachers are good, but what I'm saying is, you had certain teachers that had a way of reaching you. They had a, a way of presenting. Uh, I had trouble with math. I had trouble with algebra. I just did not get it. But I had a, I had a high school teacher, and he was my coach. And, and you know what? He had a way uh, that he taught me how to do algebra. He had a way to present that. And, and when he spoke and when he gave the directions and he showed you how to do it in that, he had a way that he captured my attention. And, and I understood what he was trying to show me. So when I say that this morning, you, you can think back in your time in school where you had a teacher, whether it be a favorite teacher or someone, they had a way to present English unto you that, that you could understand it and absorb it. it, it you, in other words, what I'm saying is, 
you got it, okay? There's many a times, and it, and it wasn't the teacher's fault, it was, it was my fault, okay? I just didn't get certain things, all right? I wish I would have paid more attention, but, but you can remember how that, that teacher spoke and how they captured your attention, whether it be through... Uh, whether it be through a joke or, or, uh, or some type of humor or, or just the way they presented it, 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 get, it got your attention. But when I see these words here of, of how these officers came to Jesus, you got to remember these officers, they were, they were, they were trained soldiers. They, uh, they were not trained uh, uh, to have mercy. They were not trained uh, uh, to listen to someone as they pleaded for their innocence or they pleaded to be set free. It's like, it's like today, if, it doesn't matter where you see somebody, uh, they, whether they're being arrested or whether they're being in the court system in front of a judge, you know, they're, they're, most of the time they're trying to say, I'm not guilty, I, I didn't do that. They are pleading their case. Uh, and these officers, they're, they're trained uh, to listen, to ignore those things. They're trained uh, uh, to be human sometimes and not have compassion for someone. I, you know what, I, I, I have compassion for people and, and love for people. These, these men, uh, they didn't have that. I, I was thinking that, you know, they, being the officers that they were, they were trained to obey the commands of those that were in charge of them. Uh, many of you men here this morning, you were in the Army and, or the Navy or the Marine Corps or the Air Force. What would happen if you disobeyed a direct order? Somebody, answer me. What happened? Court martial. You'd get in trouble, wouldn't you? You would either, you would either be sentenced to prison or some other form of, 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 of punishment and and it would go against your record and all those things. And so these men were trained to obey orders. But you know, they, they, when they came to Jesus and that, there was something uh, that, that touched their hearts. There's something that spoke to them that changed uh, every aspect about them. I can imagine these officers, you know, uh, the Bible doesn't tell us any more than they're just officers, but could you imagine if these officers had a home uh, and had families and wives and kids, and, and here they are, and, and you know how it is. They go home in that, and they, you know they went home different than the way they came in. You know That happened to me one time on August the 19th of 2001. I went to church one way, but I came home another way. And you know what? You know who noticed it the most was Laura. She noticed that there was something different about me. Something had changed in my life. Uh, and so I can imagine that when these officers got home, their wives and kids noticed there's something different about daddy. There's something different that's going on here. And you know what? You say, preacher, what happened to them? I, it's the words of Jesus touched their heart and changed them in a way. You say, preacher, you don't know they're changed. I know they're changed because they didn't arrest Jesus. They didn't bring him back to those that, that put, uh, put them in charge to arrest him and to bring them before them. I, I, I begin to write some things down. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you these as, um, uh, you know, they wasn't changed by the tone of his voice. You know, I've heard preachers that have a tone in their voice. And I mean, they're great speakers. I've heard, I've heard people that gives, um, uh, they give motivational speeches. You know, you've got, you've got men and women all over the country, whether it be uh, religious or not, they give motivational speeches to, to ball teams, to company employees, to, to all types of people, and they have a way of, of making their sound of their voice and uh, presenting their case in that. And it's attractive, and it motivates you, and it gets you going. I've been to those, and you know what always happens? Uh, when I go to those motivational speeches, I'm on fire for about three days. Thursday rolls around, and I'm back to the same old person. Uh, you know, sometimes I'm unmotivated, okay? But you know, when Jesus spoke to my heart, it didn't wear off in three days. It didn't wear off in three years. It's not going to wear off in 30 years, all, all right? It's not going to wear off in 300 years. Let's go a little bit farther. It's not going to wear off in three million years. Because you know why? I'm still going to hear his voice. I'm going to get to see the presence of my Lord and Savior in heaven for an eternity in that. And listen to this. It wasn't because of the loudness of his voice. There's been many a times 
in preaching or I'll go to a church or I'll go somewhere else and they'll hand me a microphone. And you know what I tell them? I don't need that. I'm loud enough. I think I told Mike that when I came here for the first time. He said, no, we need it because we're recording it and, and we, need, we need the sound. And that's okay. It wasn't the loudness of his voice that got their attention. It wasn't the softness of his voice that got their attention. It, it, you know what? When you think about that, it had nothing to do with that physical sound that Jesus proclaimed out of his mouth. It wasn't his education level that got them either. Now I want to say this. Jesus was the most educated one there ever was because He was the Word of God. The next thing, it wasn't the authority of man that got their attention. But it was the authority of God that got their attention. I was reminded, um, turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 19. And this is very familiar scripture to us. 1 Kings chapter 19. And we know this story. And the Bible says in verse, verse 10, And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of, of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant and thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord and Behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a great presence, all right? And he said, And break in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but uh, the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, notice this, a still, small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, Why dost thou hear Elijah? I'm thankful today for that still, small voice. It's not a voice that I can hear with my ears that God made. But it's a voice that I can hear from the inside. It's a voice that when I heard it for the first time, it revealed to me my condition and that I needed a change in my life. It, you know what? And ever since that time, that voice has not been quiet. It's always there. Amen. There's been times in my life that, you know, when I've needed some encouragement to go on, you know what? It's that still, small voice that's inside of me that gives me the encouragement to go on. There's been times I know that you've been down and out. There's been times that you've been burned down in that. And you know what gets you up? It's that small, still voice on the inside that gets us up. There's been times, you know, when you're not doing the things you're supposed to be doing, you're not living right. Guess what? It's that small, still voice uh, that tells you deep inside you're doing wrong. Uh, but I want to say this. Uh, I believe when you're doing right, you know what? That still, small voice uh, will goose you a little bit on the inside and let you know that you're doing right. Amen. If he can tell you you're doing wrong, he can also tell you you're doing right. He spoke in a way that, you know what, it didn't tickle their ears. He spoke in a way that it, it tickled their heart. Everybody's, you know, we're, we're caught up in a, a, an election, a great election for our country. And everybody's wanting to promote change. And everybody's wanting to do this and do that. Listen, man is not going to change unless Jesus touches their heart. That's the plain and simple truth. But when you think about this, these men, their condition changed about them. Now, when I was thinking about this, you know, that when they, when they left from the place that they were commanded to go get Jesus, you know what they went with? This is in my mind. They, they probably had some type of armor. They probably had some type of weapon. I don't know what that weapon would be. It might have been a sword. It might have been a bow and arrow. It might have been a knife. I don't know. But I have to believe that they were armed with something. And you know what Jesus was armed with? Only the Word of God. They went there to arrest Jesus. But they left there different than they came. 
Let me ask you a question. Who arrested who that day? Huh? They left there different. When you think about it in a way, you know, there's just something about the words that He speaks to your heart. There's just something about the presence that He gives you. There's just something about that peace that He puts inside of you. That overwhelming joy in that. And when you think about this, you know, these soldiers, as they were going, you know, they had one thing on their mind. I want to tell you this morning, when they left, they still had one thing on their mind, but it wasn't about arresting Jesus. It was about Jesus. Amen. We're serving a Lord today that can change the very hearts of man without surgery. We're serving a man today that you know what? He changed each and every one of us if you're saved by the grace of God when He spoke to your heart. Say, preacher, how did He speak to your heart? The same way He did yours. Think about this. The testimony of those soldiers changed. After they heard the word of Jesus. We are all the result today. Because we've heard the word of Jesus. You know what? I'm going to ask a question. Why are we here? We're here because of Jesus. And no other way. There's some things that Jesus spoke of. Many times. In the New Testament. That you know what? It got their attention. Here's some of the things that Jesus you, these, are, these are things that, you know what, we've all heard and read. Now, I have to believe in my heart that these things that Jesus spake of, nobody had ever heard before. And one of those is this. I give them eternal life. I wanted Jesus in my heart because, Brother Zach, He's the giver of eternal life. He often talked about forgiveness of sins. I'm serving him today because he forgave me of my sins. That's why I'm here. He often said out of his belly should flow rivers of living water. I've got a source today that will never run dry. You know what? When famine, when famine hits sometimes, and I remember in the old days... We had a well at the house, and you know what? It wasn't very deep. And when the dry weather comes, Mom and Daddy say, Now you can't use too much water. She may run dry. It may run out. We may, may even run low. And there was times that we had pulled the pump out of the ground, and, and you know you had those, those, those hoses connected to it, and Daddy would take a tape, and he'd measure how much water was on the, it was on the pipe and, and sticking out of the ground. And I remember one year, she got really low. I'm serving the Lord today. <laughs> Brother Zach, there ain't no measuring tape <laughs> that can measure his supply that he's got for you and I. He said, I am the living bread. You remember the children of Israel when they were marching through the war wilderness for 40 years. If it, wasn't God, if it wasn't God supplying them manna and quail for all those years, they wouldn't have made it. You know what? Today, Jesus is our manna. Jesus is our living bread today. And you know what? We are not going to run out of what He has to offer us. He also said, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by me. He's my way today. He also said this. Forgive and you will be forgiven. You know what Jesus does? He's a restorer of relationships. Not just between him and you, but he can restore relationships in families, and friends, loved ones, neighbors. He's the best restorer I've ever met in my life. There's a song. I'll have to look that song up. Um, I'd have to, I have to go back and look it up and get the words out of it. But it talks about the broken pieces. And it talks about how that Jesus takes those broken pieces and he puts them back together. Now, I've, I, I've got a few broken bones in my body, okay, where I've, I've broken a few things. Uh, I, I, I don't want to test the theory, but they tell me that 
once they break and they feel back together, they, they, they're stronger than they were before. I don't want to test that, but I take their word for it, okay? But I believe this. I believe Jesus has got the best super glue that's ever been made. Amen. Hey, I've broke things, and I've had the super glue back together. Praying mama didn't find them in the house, okay? I broke things praying Lori didn't find them in the house. I broke my own stuff praying that the glue always holds, okay? But I like when Jesus puts things together. Yeah. It talks about the word in Ephesians, how everything fitly framed together. Mary, would you care to play us a song for this morning? I wrote some notes down, and I take notes when the Lord lays thoughts in my heart. And this is one of them that really stuck out to me. Those soldiers came for Jesus, but Jesus came for them. You know what that means? He came for me. And he came for you. He came for everyone. And you know, say, preacher, what makes the difference in a life? It's Jesus. What makes the difference in a church? It's Jesus. What makes the difference in a home? It's Jesus. What makes the difference in a relationship? It's Jesus. What makes, what, hey, what gives you hope when you ain't got nothing? It's Jesus. What gives you hope when it's broke? Jesus. He came for you. And he came for me. As she plays softly, if you want to pray, we're not going to ask you to come to the front. But I am going to ask you wherever you're at. Wherever you're at in your life, you can pray right where you're at. You know, there's often times that Laurie and the kids are talking at the same time. I do good to hear one of them when only one of them's talking. But our Lord and Savior today, if we all prayed at the same time, He could hear our prayers. Not only that, if all of us prayed at the same time, He gives you just as much attention as He gives me. My prayer today is every one of us leave here different than the way we came in. And you know what that is today? That's nothing that I've said. That's nothing that anybody else has done. But it's what Jesus can do in a heart and in a life. Those men went home different than when they came. You know what? There's times in my life, even at work, I can just feel the presence of Jesus. There's times in my life that, you know, when... I get down about things. I let things bother me and I let things worry me. And that still small voice, Brother Mike, just begins to speak in here. And you know what? It, you know how sometimes you can't hear the TV and you got to go over and you turn it up so you can hear it? There's times I just feel like Jesus reaching in there and just turning the, the hope up in my life. There's times that I, I feel like He's reaching in and He's just turning the joy up in my life. Whatever that need is, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to You in prayer, Lord, today. Giving You thanks and giving You praise, God, for this Scripture, God, that You've given us. God, as we looked into the Word today, and God, we saw these soldiers that came to arrest Jesus. But Lord, we also saw that they went home differently than when they came. Lord, I'm so thankful that you sent your son to die on a cross for me and for all of those. I'm so thankful today that Jesus spoke to my heart. And when he spoke to my heart, he changed my life forever. God, I'm so thankful today for the hope and the joy that you've given in my life. I'm thankful, God, for this church. And I'm thankful for everyone that's gathered in here today. Lord, as we've prayed together, God, we're just praying that, Lord, if there's one that's lost, uh, God, whether they're here today, whether they'll watch the video, whether they'll see it from home, wherever they're at, 
They see that need of salvation, that they would, come, they would just give their life and, and come to you, Lord, and turn things over. Lord, I pray for the church. I pray for God that those are out of your will. I pray for all of those, Lord, that just, uh, Lord, they just get burdened down sometimes. And, Lord, I know that when you speak to hearts, uh, Lord, it, it, just, it just has an effect in our lives. Lord, as we pray today, we want to thank you for all the answered prayers that you've given us. Lord, I know in the midst of all the trouble of this year that it's offered to everyone. God, I can stand and say today, you've blessed me more this year than you've ever blessed me in my life. Lord, I just want to thank you for that. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget, uh, we'll have preaching tonight starting at 6.30. So you come back and be with us tonight at 6.30. Uh, if you can't, there is, uh, it'll be on uh, Facebook and what else we put that on? Just Facebook, YouTube, uh, so you can you can watch it there as well. Uh, don't forget uh, Wednesday night service. We'll be having preaching on Wednesday night. Uh, don't forget the announcements about our trunk or treat this year will be different, but it's still going to be good, okay? And uh, next Sunday, uh, uh, we'll come in early before church, and we can uh, start putting candy and stuff in the pumpkins and get all that stuff worked out. Uh, don't forget um, the shoe boxes uh, in the back. If you can take one and fill it with things that these kids would enjoy, um, and most of you know what goes in it. If you don't, uh, don't don't be afraid to ask someone. We can tell you. Uh, don't forget the blanket drive. You know, um, uh, for the Baptist Center and stuff that'll be going on the rest of this month. So continue to remember those requests. And I ask Brother Larry if he dismisses, please. Dear Lord, we want to come to you today. We thank you so much for all your. Blessings, dear Lord. Be with all the requests. Take care of the baby, girl. Be with us every day, dear Lord. Lead us, guide us, and protect us. And we want to tell you that we love you, Lord. And we ask it all in our blessed, sweet name. Amen.